uh, so Barry, you're, uh, you've been out traveling and you've been uh, working with uh, your, your clients lately. What are you seeing that's changing in the market or what are you seeing that continues to be a challenge uh, where you are? Well, first of all, why don't, you, why don't you say a little bit about what it is that, uh, that you do for people? What, uh... Well, I'm, uh, I suppose in these days, I, I like to describe myself as someone who changes behavior and I'm the guy that actually makes it happen. Mm -hmm. There's so much data, so much information. Uh, customers, I think, are infinitely more informed than ever before and continue to be so. Yeah. Recently talking with a young lady in Memphis who was telling me the great value that she used to be able to bring was to be able to demonstrate the product and show how to use it and right. add her value. She says now they go on YouTube, learn everything they need to about how to use it, how to maintain it, and then buy the stuff on uh, Wherever they, want. wherever they want it. And yeah. so her value has become dramatically d diminished because the customers are so much better informed. Well, that's uh, actually, we've been seeing that for some time. The, um, when we think about what's happening in the market, um, if you go back a couple of decades, the salespeople were the main vector for information to get to the Absolutely. marketplace. Absolutely. If you had some complex thing or even some simple thing, yeah. but you wanted it run properly yeah. and you want to have the right material in it, want to know what the latest thing was, yeah. the sales rep would come in, they'd be a font of information, the product knowledge they had would be um, what you relied on yeah. to make the right choices. But in the age of Google, and like you said, in the age of YouTube, yeah. a customer doesn't have to wait for the next time you're going to call him in three days or three weeks. He can go on and find the information in three minutes online. Wow. And I think that um, uh, as the relationship or as salespeople and sales forces have counted on that information being the component that helped get them in the door, uh, they're finding that the customers don't need that anymore and they're having a harder time getting in the door. The customers just don't want to see them because what do you need a salesperson for? Uh, certainly not for product knowledge unless you're in a very, very narrowly defined, specialized area where the salespeople can still do that. In most cases, the customer is as well informed as a salesperson or more so. Well, I, uh, I, I listen to you with uh, great fascination because uh, one of the things I'm hearing, and you said what's changing, and I work with hundreds of sales leadership and salespeople. And frequently I hear the customer has visited LinkedIn before you as the sales rep come in. So I know where you've worked. I know what your level of expertise is. I know more about you than you might have done your research with me. Isn't that fascinating? It's a new one on me, which I shouldn't be a new one because I imagine it's been going on for a while. But I find that there is uh, a, a fear among salespeople that the power base is clearly and dramatically. I mean, I've always said that power was in the head. But there's no doubt about it that the customers have discovered their power through information. And unless you're a salesperson who has done your homework better, who can truly educate and bring some value to that meeting beyond just simply, I sell this and I will solve this problem. No, you've got to anticipate uh, what the customer's problems might be before the customer even knows that there could be a problem in that particular area. Well, that, that's interesting because I think, you know, as I was coming up through the uh, sales game, um, the guys that I admired the most, yeah. the guys that were the most capable, yeah. really did their homework. And when they went out on the call, they had all their ducks in a row. They knew, knew everything about the customer. Yeah. But I think um, that was in a day when there were fewer customers that you're responsible for. If you've got 130 customers in your territory, um, it's hard to ha find the bandwidth. And uh, most people don't have never been taught or have the discipline to do that kind of homework. So imagine a place where the customer's done the homework on you and you haven't done the homework on the customer. That would be and I think terrifying. That, I think it happens. I think yeah. the, the, the balance of power, I hate to say this because I work on both sides of the table and I like to think that power is in the head. We, as a soft skills trainer and as someone who works on developing and giving salespeople confidence to do a good job. Yeah. Boy, it's hard to give them the confidence when you know that that customer is as informed just to repeat what you're saying as you are. So what do we do? We have to up the game by making sure that every call we make is one in which we bring some teaching, some tailoring, and some genuine value add to the conversation. Yeah, and that's, that's very interesting because as we've seen uh, sales training evolve over the years, um, and the kinds of uh, soft skills that a good, capable salesperson has to have. Um, 
I think we've gone from a place where sales uh, people were highly trained and highly skilled oh, wow. to a place where they are not so highly skilled. And now we're starting to see it go the other direction. I'm seeing a lot of companies saying, wait a minute, something's wrong here. And they're starting to bring in consultants and experts like yourself to uh, make sure that the salespeople once again uh, know how to negotiate, uh, once again know how to uh, really be a professional. And uh, we've gone from a time when people were phoning it in, you know, that a salesperson thought, uh, you know, if showing up with a box of donuts was was the answer, and in reality, showing up with the uh, not just the product knowledge, but a knowledge of what the customer's job is, what his company does, what their struggles are, and having some solutions for them that they might not have thought of is a thing that's going to be done. Well, I've had the opportunity of working with yourself and learning more about the world of distribution. I, I, I think one of the things that I'm finding interesting is how specialists are being hired to, in many categories of trade, um, possibly coming from the other side of the table. In other words, they have been in the operational role, they have been in the engineering role, they are electricians, they are people who know the trade inside out mm -hmm. and who have a very different type of conversation. They're not the ones who know about prospecting, they're not the ones who know about asking great questions and listening and uh, asking for the order, but boy, do they know the customer's business infinitely better than the customer would know their business. And as a and a team team approach, um, I'm hearing all sorts of stories how the customers gravitate and really like that kind of sales engineer. I suppose one might refer to them as they're certainly not your classic kind of salesperson that uh, I would have been teaching twenty, ten, five years ago. I think that's really, really fascinating because in the in days of of yore, you would want to have um, uh, the customer would want to see you when the cus when you left the customer's office, he would say, "I'm sure glad I had this meeting because I came away with something I didn't have." And what he would have had of that in those days was product knowledge. Um, maybe a, a good warm feeling about the charisma or the familiarity of the sales rep, you know, that relationship selling that I was taught when I was young. Uh, but now, um, what would make a customer really excited in an environment where they already know everything about your product and know a lot about your company right. and you and they have experience? And they don't it. need to know a lot more about you and your interest in the ball game and how the family is. I no. mean, anybody who thinks that's going to get them through the next 12 months needs no. to think. I'll have something to say about that in a moment because um, I, that's been put really strongly to me by some people that are really uh, I admire. But um, now, uh, if, if your objective is to leave a sales meeting with the uh, customer glad that you were there and, and looking forward to when you come back, um, what you would do that would set you apart from the other guys in my view is you do exactly what you were just talking about. They come in, they say, I noticed that things have been really tough in the market for, for people like you. Right. And we notice that there's this new emerging thing or this new thing that your customers are going to like or this thing that's going to make it easier for you. And without, uh, uh, and wouldn't it be remarkable, the customer or the buyer on the other side of the table was saying, you know, I was just in a meeting yesterday with my boss and he was saying, you've got to get something done like this. And I wasn't quite sure what to do, he's saying in his head. And then the salesman shows up and he's got the solution. Yeah. He's given me a document that I can take and I can yes. rewrite and I can submit Absolutely. it. Or I've, um, you know, I've got an idea, a concept, or a process that I hadn't thought of, nobody's yeah. thought about around here that people are using. That's the kind of thing that would say, wow, this, that was a worthwhile meeting because, um, because I'm going to be more valuable to, to the people that, that I care to impress because I had exposure with a salesperson that brought me something I hadn't thought of. High-level analytics is rapidly becoming a necessity, not a want in wholesale distribution. If you're using analytics software not specifically built for distribution, you're missing key metrics and insights competitors are using to take your best customers. Click in the link in the description to see how Waypoint Analytics can give you an edge that other people just don't have.